The situation itself is simple enough. My neighbor, his name's Jim, who's been living in the apartment next to me for the past three years, just moved out a week ago. I'd say that we were friends, but not necessarily close. Not to the point where I knew a lot of things. Not to the point where I knew a lot about things that were happening in his life, anyway. He invited me over a few times, we always exchanged greetings and passing each other in the hallways, and he generally seemed like a nice guy. With the context out of the way, well, this is what happened to me. I got back home from work one day around 5 p.m., decided to get wasted on the couch before passing out, and that's exactly what I did. However, I was awoken around 11 p.m. to extremely loud music. At first I thought that my alarm went off or something, but then I realized that I didn't even set one. Groggily, I looked around my living room trying to figure out where the hell the noise was coming from. That's when I recognized that it was bleeding in from the walls to my former neighbor's place. Obviously I was confused. I mean, I saw him leave. He packed up, we said our goodbyes, and I hadn't seen him since. And to my knowledge, there hadn't been a new tenant yet, so... Did he return? And if so, for what? Throw a damn party? He never seemed like the kind of guy that would do that. The only other feasible explanation was that a new guy had already moved in. It wasn't that impossible to believe. I'd been working long hours recently, so maybe I just never noticed. I tried to go back to sleep. But the music, laughing, and talking was so loud there was no way in hell that I could. I tried just waiting it out. I put on a movie, plugged in my headphones, hoped that they'd finish when the movie was done. I have to admit, I was rather infuriated when the film ended and the music was still as loud as ever. It was 1am at that point. I'm all for people having fun, but this was ridiculous. The music was unnecessarily loud, and the people were pretty much hollering at this point, to the extent where it was making my head throb. I walked out into the hallway and made my way to the door to the right of my neighborhood. I was thinking if they were all pissed enough, I'd feel less guilty about calling the landlord on them. I must have rung that doorbell for five minutes, but nobody came out. It was at that point when I decided to deal with the problem head on. I moved over to my neighbor's door and started pounding. After a few minutes of this, the music stopped. In fact, it was nearly dead silent. I say nearly because I could still make out faint whispers coming from the other side. Almost as if these idiots were trying to make it seem like nobody was in there. But nobody ever opened up. What the hell's going on? I thought to myself. I yelled at them to keep it down and return back to my own place. Feeling relieved that the obnoxious noise had finally ceased, I stumbled into my couch and I fell asleep instantly. But the peace barely lasted. But it must have been around five minutes later, the music returned, and now even louder than before. However, this time, I realized something rather odd. I couldn't hear the voices anymore. I thought about it. Had I ever heard a voice? Or had it just been the music this whole time? But there was no way. I definitely had. They had been insanely loud before, after all. I got up, I put my ear to the wall, and all I could hear was the deafening music. There was nobody talking, nobody laughing, no glasses clinking. Nothing. That wasn't even the strangest part, though. The music itself was weird. I could tell that it was like pop rap, the same kind of stuff that gets played on the radio a lot, but there was there was something terribly off about it. After a few focused minutes, I finally figured out what it was. The music must have been playing backwards. I mean, not only that, but it was also slightly distorted, as if the rapper's voice had been made deeper. At this point, I was starting to feel a bit unsettled. I finally decided to call my landlord. My phone had run out of battery while I was sleeping, so I plugged it into my computer and I waited for it to charge up. And as I did, I was missed with a bombardment of missed calls and texts from my landlord. This was roughly what the last text read. Look, if you're still in your apartment, then you need to get out of there right now. I had Mary knock on your door at around 7.30, but nobody answered. I guess that means you aren't home. If that's the case, then good. Don't come back until I figured everything out. I can't believe... Jim never told you why he left so suddenly. Received at 7.53 p.m. I checked the time now. It was 1.35 a.m. That was the last text he sent me. Then that meant that 
That meant this fucked up situation wasn't yet resolved. My heart dropped and I furiously replied to him asking what the hell was going on. I texted Jim as well. Right after I did, I grabbed my jacket and headed toward my door. However, I didn't leave instantly. My gut was telling me to check the peephole first, so that's what I did. Jim was standing right outside my door, staring at me with a deadly blank expression. He also wasn't moving at all. The music had gotten even louder at this point. I slowly stepped backwards from the door and sank back into my couch. Whatever the hell was standing outside my door, I wasn't willing to deal with it. I, I still tried to rationalize this. Maybe he was on drugs, but then... What was my landlord talking about? He still hadn't responded yet, and... What was the creepy-ass music coming from next door? I decided to head out into the balcony for some fresh air. As I tried to calm myself, I looked down at the dizzying drop below. There was no way out of there. The music was still loud as hell out here. Surely the cops must be coming soon. Feeling somewhat relieved at this thought, I turned to look out over the balcony next to me. I really wish I hadn't. Jim, or whatever the hell that thing is, was standing right there, staring at me with that dead look on his face. For a second, I was stunned. I snapped out of it once it started moving towards me. The last thing I saw before I was back in my apartment was him literally climbing over the damn rails. The distance between them must have been around 10 feet, though. There was no way that he could be able to make it, right? That question was answered when I saw him staring through the glass of my own balcony at me. I quickly closed the blinds and barricaded it with a dresser from my bedroom. That was a good move. Because I heard the glass start shattering. Only a few moments later, my head was spinning. I checked my phone again, hoping to see a reply from my landlord, but it wasn't there. At some point, the music stopped completely. I held my breath, waiting for... something. I stood there for what felt like hours before the silence was finally broken. There were police sirens in the distance, getting louder. I heard faint shouting from below as the sirens stopped right outside the apartment complex. Thank God, I thought. Now, all I had to do was wait. At least... At least I wish that was all I had to do. I heard something else coming from the walls connecting the room next to me. Only a few moments later, it sounded like a transmission from a number station. Loud static in the background, however, the voice speaking sure as hell wasn't human. It was deep, to the point where it, it pretty much was just a croak. It was saying things in a language that I'd never heard before, but also one that I think I wasn't meant to hear. Every time the voice said something, my brain would start pulsating. My eyes would water. I couldn't deal with it. I ran towards the door and looked out the peephole again. This time, I couldn't see anything. As in literally nothing. It was just black, as if the, the hallway lights had been turned off or something. That probably would have convinced me to stay in my apartment if it wasn't for the fact that I heard my dresser crashing down behind me. I heard a couple of footsteps coming towards me before I burst out and shut the door behind me. I was in pure darkness now. However, not in, however, not in the sense that my surroundings were devoid of light. It was more as if my, my damn eyes were closed, even though I knew they were open. I fished my phone out of my pocket and turned on the flashlight. However, that didn't help. The light did nothing to penetrate the sheer void. Without knowing what else to do, I just started running. So this is where things got fuzzy. I remember running into something at one point and falling hard. I started scrambling backwards, but at that point, my brain had pretty much been fried by the obscured language booming through the air. I felt something bony grip my leg before the hallway door was kicked open and the officers rushed in. The light illuminated what had grabbed me and I... I guess the very sight of it caused me to pass out. I really can't remember what it looked like though. In fact, it physically hurt when I tried to re recreate it in my head. I woke up in a hospital bed. An indeterminate amount of time later, I was suffering from two gunshot wounds, one to the shoulder, the other to the thigh. I also had third degree burns around my ankle. I asked the nurse what had happened to me. She just smiled and explained calmly that I'd been robbed and beaten in my apartment. I mean, I mean, I figured that I'd get that kind of answer. It's obviously bullshit, though. They're telling me that I can't go back to my place. That they'll figure everything out and relocate me to a new residence. When I ask them why, they all just dodge the question. They've given me my phone back, but my landlord and Jim are not in my contacts anymore. I've checked the news. Nobody reported in on it. 
nobody seems to want to tell me anything. I don't know, honesty. I don't think I really want to know. Hey there kids, and happy October. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to tell you a couple things that are happening this October that haven't ever happened before. First off, if you take a look at the channel, you'll notice that I'm currently live. That's right, we started up doing a Halloween horror radio program. That means 24-7 without interruption, you'll be hearing Creepypasta stories, read by yours truly. And as well as a few other guests that we've had on the channel before. The other thing are Halloween exclusive t-shirts. These t-shirts are available in the Mr. Creepypasta link down below in the description. Actually, at any point if you want to check out the description, feel free to scroll down and see what kind of cool stuff's going on down there. Oh, and of course, the Halloween countdown starts on the 18th. Look forward to seeing you all in sweet dreams. <laughs>